All right, bloodsuckers, it's time for a vampire episode again. Um, we're going to talk about Abigail in episode 43. Yes, I don't know why I feel like I need to tell you what episode it is every time I start one of these, but I do. It's a habit. So yeah, episode 43, we're talking about Abigail. Uh, I did a vampire episode a few episodes back when I discussed a couple of 2023 vampire films, uh, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, and I did like a vampire quiz in that episode, and I did my top 10 favorite vampire movies in that video. So if you want to hear all that, go check out that video. So in this video, I will not be talking about that shit. Instead, I'm going to do a John Carpenter ranking, uh, because I did a poll a long time ago asking... If I did another director's filmography ranking, who would you want me to do? Because I've already done Argento and Fulci and Eli Roth when Thanksgiving came out. So now you, you voted. John Carpenter was the answer. So finally I'm getting to that. I'm going to rank all the John Carpenter movies. All the ones I've seen. I've seen pretty much all of them except for the Elvis movie, which isn't even really a movie. I don't think I looked into it. It's like a documentary or something or like a biopic or something I, don't know. I haven't seen it so that won't be on the list but i'm ranking all the other ones from worst to best least favorite to favorite and only reviewing abigail there's only one movie this episode usually i do a couple or five or a lot but just one um because it's really the only new horror movie that i've seen i watched godzilla versus kong part two whatever that's called now um it's got a weird name and I also watched Civil War, but those movies aren't horror. And you guys came here to listen to me talk about horror. This is Life is Horror, not Life is Horror plus uh, giant monsters. I don't consider those movies horror. That's just like, I mean, some people might do because they're, you know, monsters. So, But those just feel like big family action blockbuster movies. Like, it's just something you take the kids to. It's not scary. It's, those aren't horror to me. In Civil War, I'm sure some people would try to argue that that's horror. But no, that wasn't to me. It was horror and bold, but it wasn't horror. I, I, I didn't like Civil War. Um, but I really enjoyed uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. I would recommend checking that one out. It's my favorite so far of the recent uh, Godzilla movies since the original Godzilla in 2014. Of this like monster verse, they're calling it. I think this was the best one since Godzilla. I'm a big fan of that original. And But anyways, let's not talk about that. I rant, I ramble, I try to keep talking because there's only one of me. It's not a podcast where there's multiple people talking, so I just got to try to keep talking. Sometimes I ramble, I don't know when to shut up. But let's get back to uh, the, the show, what it's really supposed to be about, and that's Abigail. So do we want to start with Abigail or do we want to talk about some horror news? I don't really have a lot to report in that department um last episode i was supposed to talk about barbara crampton is producing a remake of tourist trap so i'll do that now yeah so what do i think about that am i excited uh, i really like tourist trap so I'm, I'm intrigued to see what this could be uh, some people say house of wax that remake was actually just a tourist trap remake i disagree i don't see too many similar similarities but um yeah pr Barbara Crampton producing a remake of Tourist Trap. That's interesting. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know who's directing it. That's all we know so far. It's just that she's producing it. I don't know who's going to be in it, but I'm down. Uh, you know, I'm not a remake hater. There's plenty of remakes that I prefer to the originals, so I say bring it. So I'm down for that. Um, and that's all I really got to say about upcoming horror films uh, there's just not, like i think i already talked about speak no evil in the other episode and the strangers trilogy coming out uh, they just recently announced the release date for chapter two of that trilogy it's supposed to come out later this year like in october i'm not excited for that um especially the first chapter because it just looks like a like rinse and repeat of the original like scene for scene the trailer gave the whole fucking movie away and it looked pretty familiar it felt like the 2008 version so i'm not looking forward to that and so instead i thought it would be interesting this is something i've been toying around with i've been thinking of doing for a while because i go on twitter sometimes and i see all these damn polls and like wish would you rather red red pill blue pill and 
it's kind of annoying, but I was like, you know what? That could be for a fun, like, uh, you know, a topic on my show, you know, something to do, a little section. So whatever word I'm looking for, um, you know, segment, there's the word, not section. Like this would be a good segment, you know, to do this, um, you know, where you just take these stupid things that you see on Twitter. I'm sure you've seen them plenty. If you answer one of these twitter thinks you love them so that's all they'll show you from now on you know you like one thing they're like all right let's give you a hundred more of those so that's like all i'm flooded with on twitter is like all these stupid questions like pick two pick four which is better and red pill blue pill so i've been saving those the last month so i figured let's do a segment on that so uh, I, I'm not going to pull up the pictures. I'm just going to have to look at my phone and tell you what the pictures say. So red pill, blue pill, the red pill for this one. And it's uh, Jennifer's body, Jeepers Creepers, and Orphan, Saw 2, The Ring, and Wreck. And they're always just so random. Like, how do you how do you come up with this? Like, there's no, like, connection. to it. It's just like, who comes up with all this shit? It just seems so random. And so... The blue pill is American Psycho, The Descent, Ginger Snaps, Paranormal Activity, Final Destination 2, and Saul 1. And instantly, I'm going blue pill. I mean, that has the most movies that I love. Yeah, I love Orphan in that first category, and Wreck. The Ring is a pretty good movie, but, you know, Saul 2 is good. But I'm not, I haven't seen Jennifer's Body. That's the only movie that I haven't seen from this picture. And Jeepers Creepers, I've never been... A big fan of but yeah american psycho it's amazing uh ginger snaps one of the better werewolf movies uh, i like paranormal activity but love final destination 2 one of my favorite series but descent's awesome so yeah i'm going i'm going blue pill all the way uh this one's pretty short this is like pick your favorite part two we got final destination 2 saw 2 hellraiser 2 and child's play 2 it, this is easy for me if you know me Child's Play 2 is like my favorite horror movie ever. It's the fran my favorite franchise. It's the franchise that got me into horror. So easily, I'm picking Child's Play 2. And then if I had to pick a second one, I would say Final Destination 2, then Saw 2, and then Hellraiser, Hellbound, whatever. I don't like that movie. I really just, I, I've seen that movie like three or four times. I do not like Hellbound. I think it's overrated. And this is a e quick one. Which is better? Which do you prefer? Texas Chainsaw, the original, or the remake? If you saw my ranking, you know the answer is the remake. I think the remake is much scarier. Oh, here's a vampire one. How fitting. All right, so pick your favorite of these four. Uh, Blade 2. Don't know why they didn't choose part one. Uh, Fright Night 2, or A. Blinken, Vampire Hunter, or The Last Voyage of the Demeter. I'm going to go, I don't think I've seen, wait, is that the original part two or the remake part two? I don't think, I think that's the original part two. Um, I haven't seen the remake part two of Fright Night, but I'm going to go with Blade 2. I think that's just the most fun out of those four movies. So I'm going to go with that one. Here's another part two question. Jeepers Creepers 2, Sleepaway Camp 2, Psycho 2, or Pet Cemetery 2? Which is your favorite movie here? I'm going to go with Sleepaway Camp 2. I've seen it the most. Psycho 2 is amazing also, but it just doesn't have the same rewatchability. I've only seen it like maybe two or three times. Uh, but that would be my very close second pick. That's technically the best film of those four. But then I would go Pet Cemetery 2 and Jeepers Creepers 2. I'm just not a big Jeepers Creepers guy. Next one... Um, I'll just make this the last one. I got plenty more. I'll save them for a future video. If you guys like this segment, let me know and I'll keep doing this shit. All right, so out of the following titles, which three would be your top choices? And there's a lot to say here. <laughs> one, four, eight, twelve. There's 16 movies here, so you get to pick three. All right, so listen up. All right, so we got Frontiers, The Descent, Martyrs, The Conjuring, Insidious, Fear Street, the first part, uh, whatever year that was, 94. Terrifier 2, The Evil Dead Remake, Pearl, Mandy, Annihilation, The Last Shift, Gongium, Haunted Asylum, never seen that one. Uh, the Witch, Midsommar, The Mist, The Crazies, 
as above, so below, Train to Busan and the Wailing. So yeah, a good mix of like, uh, you know, A24, foreign horror, French films, and, you know, uh, infected films. It's a good blend there. Uh, two that stood out to me right away that I think are like awesome 10 out of 10 films is The Mist and The Evil Dead Remake, two of my all-time favorite films. So I'm going with those two instantly. My number three is like a big tie between a lot of films. So let's think about this. What would be my third one? I know I got The Mist and Evil Dead, but man, I love love The Descent, love Conjuring, love Terrifier 2, love you know, Midsommar, and I love Train to Busan. Not the biggest fan of the... I mean, they're good. I'm not going to say they're shit. I'm just not huge on The Wailing, and The Witch is good, but I just don't think it's amazing. I don't like Fear Street, like any of those three movies. They're just blah to me, just meh. But the first one I thought was the weakest, so definitely not going with that. Um, I'm going to go with my boy Ari Aster, Midsommar. It would be either that or Conjuring, because I love James Wan also. But man, yeah, I love Terrifier 2 also. So that, that was a hard one. That was like a three, four-way tie with the, the third choice. But the first two were easy. The Mist and the Evil Dead remake. Amazing films. So there you go. Let's get into the reviews section. All right, so let's talk about Abigail. Alrighty, wrong page. All right, so here we go. Abigail, boom, there's the poster. Ballerina vampire movie by Radio Silence. It says directed only by Matt Olpin. Um, I'm pretty sure it was both him and the other guy, Tyler. What's his name? I forget. Tyler something. Gillette, I think it was called. Um, anyway, so yeah, Radio Silence. This is their next film that they did after Scream 5 and 6, which I was not a big fan of. Uh, I was not a big fan of those movies, but they also directed um, Ready or Not, which I absolutely loved. thought that movie was awesome. And this was written by the same guy who wrote the last two Scream movies and Ready or Not. So it's the same crew, you know, from all, all four of these movies and the same composer, Brian Tyler. So this is about a group of would-be criminals who kidnap this 12-year-old ballerina for ransom. They want... $50 million, and all they have to do is babysit this girl for 24 hours. They got, you know, this ticking clock, you know, it's just got to wait it out. And then they find out, you've seen the trailer, or you read the plot synopsis, she, they find out she's a bloodthirsty vampire. And, you know, there <laughs> there is no money, it's just, they're, they're her food. And it's just, you know, chaos for a whole night one location single location film which surprises me that it's a 28 million dollar budget usually a one location film with only like six seven characters in the movie you would think this would be like a 10 million 15 million dollar budget uh there's no like huge name actors in this movie who would be like i'll be in it for 10 million dollars so, you know like you got dan stevens you got Catherine newton you got um, Melissa Barrera from the Scream movies. I mean, I don't think these are actors that are going to get like $10 million to be in the movie. So I'm just shocked by that $28 million budget. This didn't feel like that big of a budget movie. It's one location the whole time. But anyways, let's not talk about that. Um, yeah, I, where are my thoughts on this movie quickly? I don't want to talk too much about it. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just, you saw the trailer, you saw the movie. They're just running away from this vampire for the second half of the film and the first half of the film is them going to get her and then talking to each other while they have her locked up in the bedroom kind of getting to know each other even though they're not supposed to they still are you know asking about each other and you know it giving you the character development in a way where it's believable and um it's just my issue with the movie, I don't have too many issue with, issues with the movie, is these characters behave like morons in a slasher movie in the second half. Like when it's revealed that she's a vampire, which that whole revelation uh, in the trailer, that's my second complaint. I just wish they wouldn't have 
marketed the movie like this like somehow like made you think that you were going to see something else i just wish i could have been surprised by that like holy shit this is a vampire movie like i never got that experience with from dust till dawn because you know i saw it many years later and i've never seen the trailer for that movie but i would imagine it was a surprise um i would hope they didn't spoil it but yeah like this movie it's revealed like 40 to 45 minutes in like it's a good while before they reveal that she's a vampire so i just feel like the trailer giving that away was a mistake i feel like it would have been enough to just market the film like these criminals kidnap a girl they take her to this house and then shit goes crazy and you just show like quick flashes of just bloody rooms and like you just wonder like what the hell happened like you know who is this little girl connected to that's doing all this you know and just say it's from the filmmakers who brought you ready or not and the screen movies and that would get people to go in and but no they had to market it as a vampire movie so spoil it's all spoiled um but yeah these characters they're just dumb in the second half not like super dumb that i was like really annoyed but i was just like eh, like why wouldn't you just do this and like the characters split up more than once when they know they're dealing with this super strong vampire that's gonna like tear their throat out it's like why would you split up more than once it's just annoying it's a horror movie trope it's a cliche especially in slasher movies and i just felt like i was watching a bad old slasher movie in the second half they just kept splitting up and there was just moments where i'm like they're distracted why wouldn't you attack now or like you know she breaks a window at one point a little bit and then she leaves the room i'm like well no keep breaking it that's working do it more break it fully keep hitting it and then so it's just stupid stuff like that that bugged me a little so but yeah outside of that not too many complaints i was entertained it was never dull uh i liked the performances i thought alicia weir as abigail was terrific and convincing as both like victim and vampire and i thought Catherine newton kevin duran and dan stevens were like the highlights for me uh from you know the protagonist standpoint like uh, they were my favorite characters in the movie they were like the more witty ones um you know kevin duran is like the big muscle dude and kind of a simpleton he's a moron dan stevens is the like you know kind of like the leader of the group and Catherine newton's just like the spoiled rich girl and but yeah i thought they were all fun and likable even though they're criminals i thought the movie did a good job making me kind of like them by the end even though they're scumbags or like assholes like willing to kidnap a 12 year old girl for money like you they still somehow made me like these characters by the end so i'll give them credit for that not an easy feat so um I, let's talk about the violence this movie just like scream six everyone went to twitter to start praising the gore everyone's describing this movie as like super gory now yeah there is gore in this movie but for some reason my definition of super gory is just way different than everyone else's like yeah you know this is a movie that has a couple of gory mo moments here there's lots of blood lots of blood you know there's similar things from ready or not happening in this movie you know like the way vampires die in this movie like i'm sure it's not spoiling spoiling too much to say that you know bodies explode like there's a lot of vampire movies like that where they explode or they go up in flames or they melt this is one where they explode so it's not too much of a spoiler it's just exploding vampires nothing new but yeah that's the gore that's the gore really in this movie is you get some exploding bodies so that was nice but i don't think this movie was super gory like every kill was like this like she's going around taking these people and like ripping them apart twisting their heads off or like she's not that strong in this movie yeah she breaks down a door in the trailer like yeah she's strong but she's not victor crowley ripping these people apart like the way people talk about this movie on twitter and the way they talked about scream six they make it sound like it's something else to me and that but i knew not to trust it this time because they burned me with scream six that movie was like fucking halloween one to me everyone was like fucking gory as hell it's the gory sincere and i'm like bullshit 
this movie, they're talking the same way about this movie, but this one actually does have the gore. But the first two kills are like off camera. You get aftermath gore with them. But, you know, it's just short lived stuff. Like, it's, it's hard to please me, I guess, with gore, is what I'm saying. Like, it needs to be like Terrifier 2 or some of the Hatchet movies for me to be like super impressed and be like, yes, now that's gory. This was just like quick, like, boom, explosion, aftermath stuff. And it's just like, this movie's not you know, wall to wall gory. So lower your expectations in that department. It's not super gory. Not to me. But you know, to me, blood is not gore. Gore is bodies exploding, being ripped apart, disemboweled, heads chopped off, sliced in half, shit like that. Getting, you know, a neck wound and your neck bleeding and stuff. Like that that's not gore. That's just blood. You know, that, that's just my definition. That's how I look at gore. I look at that differently. So, um, anyways, yeah, outside of the violence and the performances and characters, what else is there to talk about? I, I enjoyed it. I think I said enough already. So, would I recommend seeing it at the theater? Uh, sure, I think it's a good time. And, you know, like I said, I had a few jokes that landed. I chuckled a couple of times. I enjoyed some of these characters performances were what they needed to be you know nothing amazing nothing bad you know just good performances especially i thought alicia weir was a standout performance and yeah never boring and that's what's important never be boring like civil war i thought civil war was just boring as hell so those are my thoughts on abigail what are your thoughts i would give it like a three and a half out of five liked it didn't think it was great it's not the best vampire movie in a long time I thought Renfield from last year was freaking just hilarious, and that had over-the-top violence and gore, like tons of arms being ripped off. Like that's gore. That's really, you know, that's what I that's what I mean when I say gore. Go watch Renfield. I mean, the fucker like kicks a guy's head off, <laughs> like it's a football. Just poof, it goes flying. Like that's my kind of sense of humor. That's my type of gore. Like. That's what I love. So Renfield, that's my kind of vampire movie. This was like half of that in terms of, or maybe even less than half of that and with the violence. But yeah, still good. Check it out. Uh, definitely better than Scream 5 and 6, in my opinion. This is their best film since Ready or Not. And so with that being said, let's just roll through this ranking. I'm not going to talk about these movies. Um, I'm just going to breeze right through them. So number whatever um i'm not even gonna say numbers because i always forget what number i'm at so at the bottom is village of the damned my least favorite john carpenter movie let's do this all right cigarette burns this is the made for tv or like it's like the 50 minute long masters of horror episode um i think he did two of them did he not yeah he did pro-life and cigarette burns this was my least favorite of the two uh then body bags and all these movies from here on up I enjoy these were all like three out of five at least for me the only two i did not care for was those other two movies so body bags this is like a half john carpenter film because it's an anthology that he directed like half of and then like toby hooper did the other half or he did like two segments and toby hooper one um and i think john carpenter's segments were the best ones in this movie and escape from la i've only seen it once so that's why it's so low on the list. I don't remember how I feel about it exactly, but I'm sure I enjoyed it enough to put it above the other f few movies. So, um, Salt on Precinct 13. This is where I'm going to probably get some tomatoes thrown at me. Like, what? Because I hear quite a few other podcasters and YouTubers who say this is like a 10 out of 10 film. But man, I just, I think the performances almost all around are horrible in this movie. I just cannot get into it the same way as other people. I like the score. I like that they kill a kid in this movie so brutally. That took me by surprise the first time I watched it. I've seen it twice, and I felt the same way on rewatch. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, but man, there's just some things I don't really care for, like the characters, and especially the performances. I thought it was some of the worst acting in any Carpenter film. Um, wait. Didn't he do another movie, Dark Star? Who did that movie? Why isn't that on this list? Wait, is it? I'm losing my mind. I don't think it's on this list. Did he not do a movie in 1974 with Dan O'Bannon called Dark Star or something? 
whatever movie that is, that would be towards the very bottom on this list too. Did I forget to put that on here? I think I did. Yeah, I was not a fan of that. I think that's technically John Carpenter's first movie. Not a fan of that movie. Very, very low budget, like student film quality. I think it really was a student film. I think he was in college when he made it, but yeah. It's not even a horror movie either. I think it's like a sci-fi comedy, but it's not even funny and it's boring. So not a fan of that. The Ward. Um, saw it once. I remember this one having like a twist that kind of surprised me. And I thought Amber Heard was all right in this. So I went into this with really low expectations because everyone says like this is his worst movie next to Ghost of Mars. And I thought this movie was all right. I didn't think it was terrible. So y'all need to calm down. Pro-Life, the other Masters of Horror episode. Um very political or you know like the whole pro-life you know it's <laughs> this movie is ridiculous um and that's all i'll say just go into it with an open mind and expect absurdity because it gets crazy by the end um and ghost of mars this is another one that is hated by a lot of carpenter fans they say this is his worst next to the ward and i enjoyed it i thought it was all right you know, went in low expectations and I found myself not bored. And I like the cast. I love Jason Statham, the big Jason Statham fan. So seeing him in this before he was like, this was like right before he did Transporter, I think. Um, and yeah, I, just, I was like, yeah, I, I like the cast. Like the premise, it's all right. And you know, I'm not really a huge sci-fi person. And, you know, movies like this where they go to like foreign planets and shit, like that's not usually something i'm that that into so that's why it's low on this list but still i don't think it's a bad movie i think it's enjoyable um prince of darkness atmospheric film very well shot i don't think i've ever reviewed this movie uh, and that, i don't think it even made my top 10 of 1987 when i did that i've seen this movie twice now watched the commentary i think this movie's strongest you know the highlights of it the score and the atmosphere and i love the cast like donald pleasance um got alice cooper in there but it's just it's got some slow moments it's just a little too slow and too repetitive it's just like squirting water into other people's mouths and it's just kind of like an infection movie and it's kind of like a hybrid of different movies it's an interesting film but it's just a little repetitive a little dull here and there uh in the mouth of madness very confusing film takes a few watches to kind of start to grasp a little bit but i still don't fully have my you know head wrapped wrapped around it i was just like what the fuck is really going on what are they trying to say with this movie but it seems like a very smart film very unique it's shocking to know that the guy who wrote freddy's dead wrote this movie but then not shocking if you really think about it there's actually some, some similarities between this film and freddy's dead the whole like ghost town setting and things being looped like both of those things are in freddy's dead but yeah um like sam neill in this movie again good score by john carpenter but just a little confusing and not very high on my on my like rewatch list you know it's not the most rewatchable uh carpenter film for me and memoirs of an invisible man i've only seen this movie once but i loved it uh chevy chase and i loved uh you know the premise nothing original but i just like this premise you know it's just fascinating like thinking of all the things that you could do if you're invisible and the comedy that can come from that and i you know the invisible man is my favorite universal monster movie so i really just gravitated towards this and i was like this is almost as good as the original invisible man and it's just pretty funny and a little underrated not a lot of people talk about this movie when people talk about carpenter films this one rarely gets brought up next movie is my number 10 top 10 here we go escape from new york um the film this is the first time he worked with kurt russell and i think he did the elvis biopic thing right before this but i think this is the first like movie movie that he did with uh kurt russell and you know snake Plissken, badass uh it's <laughs> it's a little low budget like the budget kind of shows itself in some they had some really bad like at the time like 80s uh, visual effects this is like a very small budget film and that kind of hurts it a little bit it doesn't age too well but kurt russell saves it for me and some of the other supporting cast members on you know you got the chick from the fog blanking our name is it barbara something barbara 
it's not Crampton. What is it? Barbara? Fuck. Whatever. You know who I'm talking about. Um, number nine. We got Starman. I've only seen this movie once, but I just really loved the premise of this movie and the chemistry between the, the, the main two and just the emotion. This is an emotional, like, this is like a sci-fi drama, and I was just really into it. And I loved the cameo by Ted White, R.I.P., the greatest Jason Voorhees actor, stuntman, whoever lived. So, yeah, check out Starman if you haven't seen it. Um... Number eight, Someone's Watching Me. I've only seen this movie once also, but I thought it was great for a made-for-TV movie made the same year as Halloween. This is one of the better made-for-TV movies that you'll find from you know the 70s and 80s. This one just has a lot of great suspense, tension, and a, a very strong female lead and who just does the right thing. She's smart. And it's kind of like a, I think it was like a rear window inspired, you know, plot, you know, where she sees like this killer across the street at a different skyscraper, if I remember, if I remember correctly. It's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but I just remember really liking it and kind of Hitchcockian, you know. And also number seven, They Live. This is a movie that definitely went up on rewatch. This is a movie that I thought was just all right the first time I watched it, but when I rewatched it, uh, recently i was like holy shit i really enjoy that and you know i always thought that the lead guy piper should have been played by kurt russell because you know he was in like three or four other movies with carpenter right before this and it just seemed like the perfect role for uh, kurt russell so that's always kind of bugged me but i still like piper in the movie and you know keith david great soundtrack also kind of like western sounding if i remember correctly um and i just love the premise you know and also number six is vampires underrated vampire movie underrated john carpenter film this one does not get a lot of high marks from critics and fans of carpenter and i don't get it i love james woods in this movie he's the highlight and the k and b effects when that one dude gets like slashed down the middle sideways that's a great effect and it's just it's like a western vampire movie and it's just a lot of fun i love the character james woods plays in this movie and it's just a fucking blast and also number five is all right top five christine another movie that you know i've always liked it but i liked it even more on my last watch which was probably like my third or fourth watch i'm starting to like this one a lot more uh it's one of the better shot movies from Carpenter, like just visually, like I just love the way this movie was shot and just the color palette, the, some of the, the, just the lighting and the way Christine looks, the headlights when it's on fire, driving down the road. There's some really cool shots in this movie. A lot of great imagery that stands out that you could use as like wallpaper or something on your desktop, you know, or put on your phone. Like, there's a lot of great imagery. And the score is fucking awesome. Start, sound like a broken record here, but we're talking about Carpenter one of the masters of scoring films you know as he's like equally as good of a composer as he is a director you know and so this is yeah one of the better scores by him um and i reviewed this movie i think this top five i've reviewed all these films so and i reviewed vampires so number four is i did not review this movie i'll take that back big trouble in little china this is another one that I've seen two or three times now, and the more I watch it, I'm liking it more and more. The first time, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't know how zany and over-the-top and very weird it was going to be. Um, and it's a movie that I only ever saw, like, a like clip here and there growing up. Like, I would just see, like, a little, like, five-second clip here and there like the guy inflating and blowing up like i remember seeing that at a very young age and i never knew what that movie was it's like what was that that was weird and turns out it was this movie and yeah it is a bonkers film but just like the other kurt russell movie i was talking about just in this movie he's also like the saving grace he's like the best part of you know escape from new york he's the best part of this movie i just love his character in this film one of my favorite characters that he's ever played i would say is jack in this one i think his name's jack burton um you know i just love that he's not the typical action hero like it's everyone around him who's kicking ass and he's just kind of like observing everything and he 
steps in to fight every now and then, but then he just gets his ass kicked. Like, he's not a fighter. He's just a trucker who's thrown into the middle of this weird plot to get this, you know, Asian girl with these special green eyes and whatever. Like, he's just thrown into this weird plot that he has no idea what's going on. He's constantly, like, asking questions. Like, he plays the audience. Like, he's asking all the questions that the audience is asking like what the hell is going on who are these people and it's just there's a lot of comedy that comes from that all this confusion it's just fun to watch and fast paced a lot of crazy visual effects that are much more improved since escape from new york but i think that's because this had a much bigger budget this was more i think this was a studio film but yeah a lot of fun big trouble low china what a blast number three is the fog the movie that he did right after Halloween, I believe. This was the first one he did. He did this right before Escape from New York. And this is also another low-budget film. Very low-budget. The second film he made with Jamie Lee Curtis. And I've seen this movie probably half a dozen times now. And I reviewed it. So check out my review and hear all my thoughts there. Number two. The Thing. 10 out of 10. This is... The, the top two are the, the masterpieces from John Carpenter, in my opinion, and I think most people's opinion. I don't think that's the shocker. Like, everyone's top two is going to look like my top two, but some in reverse. But this is my preference. Number two, The Thing. Amazing practical effects. Just phenomenal. The score by Morricone and Carpenter. I believe he did some of it also, I read somewhere. And I don't think he gets the credit in the credits at the end, but I think he it sounds carpenter-esque you know so i think he did it just that boom boom it's just it's perfect and the just ugh, i don't want to gush I, this video is long enough so i'll just end it here the thing 10 out of 10 my number two but number one you can guess it halloween you know big slasher fan so of course i'm going to gravitate to this one and prefer it over the thing i've seen it more times i watch it every halloween it's my favorite in the Halloween franchise. It's my one of my favorite slashers. Not my favorite, but one of them. Definitely top five slashers for me. And my favorite John Carpenter movie. What's there to be said about this movie that hasn't been said? Nothing. Everybody has said it. You know, the score, the atmosphere, cinematography. You know, despite its very low budget, they managed to make this movie look like it was bigger uh, because of the way it was shot. And it's just the Dean Cundy cinematography. Man, it's my favorite soundtrack of all time. Uh, I did a top 10 favorite horror scores uh, last year, and I do believe this was my number one. So yeah, this is just an amazing film. Simplistic, but amazing. So there you go. Number one, John Carpenter's Halloween. What is your John Carpenter ranking? If you're still listening, let me know in the comments below. Uh, what are your thoughts on Abigail? And... I can't remember if I did this already or not, so I will do it now in case I forget again. Shout out to two users, two uh, viewers who gave me super chats. I don't ask for money, but these people gave me money anyways because they like my videos enough. So just want to say shout out and thank you to Royce Bun and Johnny. Um... <laughs> Uh, what's your real name johnny is that your real name johnny uh, there was numbers next to it but i didn't write it down so it was user johnny like six four eleven or something but you know who you are so thank you johnny thank you royce uh for donating money for supporting the channel it means a lot i I'm, I'm surprised you know i don't i don't think i'm amazing at this i don't think i'm entertaining i try to be entertaining but it's it's hard especially when you're by yourself i would like to do this with more people but with my Work schedule and sleep schedule, it's just impossible. But if you're a night owl like me and you stay up, you know, throughout the middle of the night, maybe we could do this together and you have a good audio and webcam, you know, set up because uh, I don't want someone with shitty audio doing a podcast with me. I would like to do a podcast at some point with other people. I would because this is kind of boring for me. You know, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be doing this because it's just. It's not fun. Like, I listen to podcasts a lot, and I'm just jealous. You know, I love listening to podcasts every day at work. And I just fantasize about being on one and, you know, being able to actually talk to someone while talking about these movies. It's just kind of boring after a while. Just staring at a webcam, talking to really nobody. Not being able to bounce 
thoughts off and ideas off of and I don't know, it's just but yeah, it, who knows, maybe one day if you're listening to this and you and you would wish to join me on this um I don't have a Skype, so I don't know how I would do it, but whatever. Uh yeah, if you're interested, you think you're up for it and you're up late at night and I'm talking late <laughs> and you know through the throughout the night cuz right now I'm doing this at like 2 in the morning, so you have to be a, a night person to be able to do this with me. So Anyway, so yeah, if you're interested, let me know. I'll think about it. So keep in touch. All right. So yeah, let, let me know your, your thoughts on these movies, the rankings. Let me know. And adios until next time. I don't know what the next video will be about, but we'll see. So yeah, goodbye. <laughs>